this example app, I have a list of movies, and currently users are able to write reviews for movies, but I would like to add a little more social interaction here by integrating Facebook into this app. This way users can share their movies reviews with their friends. Well, let me show you how to do that. Now, one of the easiest ways to add Facebook to an app is through their social plugins. Here we could easily embed a like button or a comment section and so on. But I'm looking for something that's a little more tightly integrated into the core functionality of the application. So the social plugins won't work for us here. Instead, what we need to do is register the application at developers.facebook.com. So doing this will allow us to communicate with Facebook's Graph API and their Open Graph platform. Now, once you're here, just click on create a new app. Next, we need to give the app a name. I'll just call this app uh, Cinematron, and I'll use that as a namespace as well. Now, it's important that the namespace be unique between all Facebook apps, so you might need to try a few here. Now, Facebook has partnered up with Heroku for hosting their web apps, which is pretty awesome because they're an awesome Rails host. Uh, you can check this box if you want them to set up that automatically, but uh, you can really use any host that you want for your Rails app. And once you hit continue, just fill in the CAPTCHA to proceed and click on Submit. So once your app is created, take note of the app's ID and secret, because you'll need these when communicating with Facebook's API. Now there are many other options which you can specify here to further customize your app. I'll be enabling this option which will allow other users to authenticate through Facebook on my application. Now it's required that you specify a site URL here for security, and I'm going to just set this to localhost port 3000, but you'll need to do this wherever your Rails app is running under, so it might be a .dev domain if you're using POW. Now once you deploy your Rails app into production, you'll need to change this domain name to match. And then after that point, if you still want to test on your local machine, you might want to change your host config file for your system so that it points that same domain name to your local system for testing and development. But in the meantime, pointing it to localhost port 3000 for local testing should work fine. And then I'll just save the changes to uh, commit them. And next up, I want to customize the auth dialog, which I can do so here. So this is what Facebook shows to the user when they authenticate, and I'll just fill this in with details about this app. There we go. Now I didn't provide a privacy policy or terms of service URL, which Facebook requires unless your app is in sandbox mode, which I'll talk about in a minute. But once you fill this out, you can click Save Changes, and then you could preview the dialog here to see what the user would see. That looks good. So uh, next I'll go to the Advanced Settings, which is where I can enable sandbox mode. It's uh, disabled by default, but I can enable it. So this will make sure that the app is only visible to its developers. And that's the only thing I'm going to change here, but there are a lot of other options which you can check out. All right, now it's time to integrate Facebook into our app. First of all, the user needs some way to authenticate through Facebook. So I'm going to add a sign in through Facebook link at the top right of our app. To do this, I'll be using the OmniAuth Facebook gem. I love OmniAuth and this gem is quite flexible because it supports both uh, authenticating through the server side and on the client side through JavaScript. And the README is quite nice, it goes into a lot of detail on how to handle Facebook authentication. I'll start by adding this gem to my gem file, gem OmniAuth Facebook, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then inside of the config initializers directory, I'll make a new file here called OmniAuth.rb. Uh, this is where I can put the OmniAuth config. Now I'll just paste in the code for this. Uh, here I'm setting the OmniAuth logger to the Rails logger and adding OmniAuth to the Rack middleware and setting the provider for Facebook and passing in the app ID and secret through environment variables here, which you would want to set those to the app's ID and secret that was given to you when you created the Facebook app. Now after restarting your app and visiting auth slash Facebook, that should take you to the Facebook sign-in page. If you get an error here, double check your app settings on Facebook and make sure that you're passing in the proper environment variables into the OmniAuth config. I'll click on go to app to complete the sign-in, which will take me back to my Rails app. And this gives me a routing error, which is no surprise because our app doesn't yet handle the OmniAuth callback. Now I'll go through the rest of this rather quickly because it's similar to what I showed in episode 241. Going into my routes file, I'll just paste in some code here to add a few routes for responding to the callback URL and passing that to a sessions controller create action, which I'll need to make. I'll make a new file here called sessions controller.rb. And I'll paste in the code for this as well. Uh, so this sessions controller create action assumes we have a user model that we can pass in the OmniAuth hash of details to, and then we persist that in a session. 
Now, before I create the user model, you might want to ask yourself, do I really need to persist the user in the database like this? Um, if you don't have any associations to set up with the user, you might be able to just store the OmniAuth hash of details directly inside of a session instead of creating a separate record for the user. But here, I will be generating a user model, so I'll just do that. I'll store the provider and UID credentials that OmniAuth gives us. And let's store the name and the OAuth token, and the OAuth expires at date time as well, because uh, Facebook OAuth tokens don't last forever. And then I'll migrate the database to create that table. Now, if you check out the OmniAuth Facebook README, there you can find an example hash of details that are provided. So you might want to store any of these values in the database, such as maybe the image URL, so you can display their profile image. Next, I'll go into the user model that was generated and paste in the code for this from OmniAuth method, which I call from the sessions controller. Now, this is quite a bit different than what I've shown you in the past, so let me walk you through it. First, I try to find a user record which matches that given provider and UID. And then I call first or initialize, which is a new method provided in Rails 3.2, I believe. And this will either return the first record or initialize a new user record with those credentials. And then I call tap on here to pass that user instance to the block. And here I just set various attributes provided by the OmniAuth hash. But notice I'm calling those hash keys as methods on here, and that's because OmniAuth uses the hashy gem, which allows you to uh, call methods as keys to access hash values. And so you just set these for each of the database attributes, and I'm extracting out the time here by calling time at, and then saving the user record and returning it. One more thing I want to point out here is that I'm resetting each of these values every time even for existing user records. And that's important to get the latest authentication token, but also if they change their name or any other credentials, that will be picked up through this. Now just a couple more quick changes to finish this up. In my application controller, I'll add in this method for fetching the current user. Pretty standard stuff here. And then inside of my application layout file, I'll paste in a couple of links so that the user can sign in with Facebook, which will go to auth slash Facebook, or sign out if they've already signed in. So let's try this out. Reloading this page, and there's my sign in link. Clicking in it should instantly sign me in because I've already authorized this app through Facebook. And it looks like it works, yay. Now Facebook provides a JavaScript SDK which you can use to authenticate the user on the client side so this way it doesn't look like they leave your application. So how might we add this to our Rails app and gracefully degrade to the server side solution? Well, let me show you. All it will take to do this is a bit of JavaScript, or in my case, CoffeeScript. So under the app assets JavaScripts directory, I'll make a new file here and call it uh, facebook.js.coffee and I'm also going to append the .erb extension so we can insert some dynamic content. Now I'm just going to paste in the code for this, but let me walk you through it. Uh, after the DOM is loaded, what I'm going to do is insert this Facebook root div into the body because this is what Facebook expects there to be. And then I'm going to make an Ajax request to Facebook's JavaScript SDK. So this way it'll load asynchronously and then interpret that as a script. Now once that's done loading, it's going to trigger this fb async init function on the window, so this means the uh, JavaScript SDK is fully loaded and ready for you to use. So that means I can initialize it with some custom settings, including the app ID, which I'm going to set using that same environment variable I used earlier. So this is where the ERB comes in handy, so that there's no duplication of that app ID in this file. And then I am enabling cookies, so this means that the uh, user's credentials will be stored in a cookie so I can access them on the server side. So once that's initialized, I'm going to listen to the click event on the sign-in link. And instead of the, doing the default behavior here, which will fall back to OmniAuth, I'm going to uh, trigger the Facebook login function, which will display a dialog to the user asking them to sign in and authenticate the app. And once they do that successfully, it's going to direct them to the auth Facebook callback path so that the uh, authentication can finish and it will generate the user record or whatever it needs to do on the server side. Now you might want to trigger this remotely through Ajax instead of just directing the user there if you want to keep everything on that same page. And then lastly, I have the sign out link, which when clicked is going to check the Facebook status and see if they're currently logged in. And if they are, it will call the Facebook logout function, which will sign them out of Facebook entirely. And this returns true so that it falls back through to the actual link behavior, which will end up signing them out of the application that they're signed in through as well, uh, removing that user ID from the session. Oh, and you know what? I just realized there's a little problem with the script. Uh, the Ajax function here doesn't like it when you use a relative protocol like I am doing here. So you'll need to specify the protocol, uh, let's say the window location 
protocol there. So that way it'll be uh, set uh, absolutely. So now let's try this out. Off camera, I deauthorize this app in my Facebook account so that we can see the effect. Now when I hit reload on this page and click sign in with Facebook, I get a pop-up dialog this time that's asking me to authorize this. So log in with Facebook and now it brings me back here and finishes the sign in process. It would create a user record if it needed to and it shows me a signed in. And now if I try signing out, it should actually log me out of Facebook, which I can click sign in with Facebook again, and it shows me that I'm logged out here where I actually have to fully sign in, and then it finishes the sign-in process. Now I do find there are some odd little issues with this JavaScript solution. For example, if I open up the browser console, you can see this warning message, which it seems to work fine despite this, but uh, it would be nice if we can uh, figure out how to get rid of this warning. Uh, if someone knows, please post in the comments. I have looked high and low for a good solution, but really haven't found any. Perhaps it's specific to me running on localhost. I'm not entirely sure, but I have seen it on fully hosted apps as well. Also, there might be cases where the Facebook login cookie and your app session cookie get out of sync, uh, which usually isn't too much of a problem, but it might cause some odd behavior. So just watch out for that. Um, all in all, you might not want to use the JavaScript authentication solution if you're okay with just staying on the server side. I find it to be a little bit more of a solid experience. So after you successfully authenticated the user, how do you actually interact with Facebook? Well, you can do that through their JavaScript SDK or on the Ruby side through a gem like Koala. So the README is pretty nice here. If you check this out, you can just pass in that OAuth token in the user uh, table into here and then just interact with the Facebook API and uh, grab information about the user or post user activity and so on. Now there's a lot more I could talk about here, but we're out of time for this episode. But in the pro episode this week, I go into detail on exactly this topic and show you how to get the most out of Facebook's Graph API. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous pro and revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.